Hey everybody, it's Leo here, and I am here today to talk to you about the free company airships. I know I brought to you a video about, geez, a couple days after Heaven's Ward launched. My free company assembled the airship, but we really had no idea what I was, what we were doing, so we just kind of launched it, and that was all that video is about. So I wanted to bring to you a little bit more of a detailed breakdown. So as I think most everybody knew even before the expansion, they are basically like longer term retainer ventures. When you send out the field explorations for 18 hours, for example, these are you know anywhere in the range of 24 to 40, I think is as high as most people have seen so far. So basically how it works, you can see our uh, the wild tree is now at rank 24, although I suspect that's about to increase. Just picking up what we got here. A deep blue crystal high quality, 18 craftsman cunning, and 100 ice crystals, and a crap ton of experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and finalize that report real quick and show you exactly how this works. Nice, got to rank 25. So, first off, as you just saw, the airships go out and they get themselves differing items. Now the items you receive do differ based on which area you're exploring. And each area here, like if you click one, it'll tell you its flight distance. Now you can strategize these a bit and send them, like you can see on the little right corner, zone sector four is in the bottom right of the map, whereas sector three is clear across the map. If I, I can't even put those on the same trip because they're too far apart. So the distance does in fact show in real time. And you can see that we have a two star and one star located or rated areas. And that's just basically what they yield and what their end result's gonna be. So anyway, what I was trying to say is you can strategize the trip. So like sector six is very close to sector three, for example. So you can put those two together and it leaves you no room for anything else, but you can in, on occasion put together three in one trip. Now the distance, the flight distance stat is affected by your stats of the airship. So before I send this thing back out, I want to go ahead and show you when you go send them out through sectors one through four usually you get back different schematic items so when you go over to the schematic board you can see we've re we've already unlocked airship prototypes one two and three and you get these drops from doing the airship exploration quests so it's all random but next up for us is going to be type four you need 10 balsa wood lumbers for bamboo weaves. We have a crap ton of bamboo weaves in our safe, but we've yet to come across balsa wood lumber. So as you go and explore, you get these items. You get the items, you turn them in for the prototypes, you take the prototypes over here, and you're able to make differing styles of airships. So as I told you earlier, we have one, two, and three, which are the Bronco, Invincible, and Enterprise type. We have made the Enterprise type four castle, but when you bring up the stats on the bottom right or when you highlight the item it shows you the stats for surveillance favor these things all affect the quality of materials you find the amount of materials you find um, range obviously and the hull specifically increases how far your airship's able to go so our next component that we're going to make is the enterprise hull and get that range up so we can go to three or maybe four locations on one trip as of right now it's still on the invincible type so we need to get it that little bit of a boost now each tier as you can see requires a minimum rank on the airship to use and when you go to the airship itself it actually has a stat dedicated to uh, the airframe capacity is at 20 out of 36 now each one of these takes up a set amount the higher the rank the more it takes so right at rank 15 for example when you're able to equip the enterprise type equipment or parts you would not be able to put all four slots as enterprise because it wouldn't have the airframe capacity for it at this stage now that i'm ranked 25 we would be able to you can see we're still using the tier one for the aft castle and the sail Whereas we've got, uh, oh God, no, we still have the Bronco type for that too. We haven't even bothered to upgrade that thing. We gotta get on that. Anyway, we have the Enterprise Forecastle. The Enterprise Hull will boost our range by 28, which should give us accessibility to always do at least three locations on one trip. Now, when you, you can repair these, as you can see, they have kind of like your equipment, uh, a repair meter on the side. You can use your airship repair materials. However, unlike your gear, as far as I can tell, having them depleted partway does not affect their functionality. It's only once they're completely broken, but you would go into the repair here. It asks you if you want to use your repair items on it. It gets back to full if you do so. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this thing. Now, the strategy I've found so far, really, as I mentioned before, since rank determines the availability for slots, it's pretty important to always go to the areas with the most experience. Now, you might limit yourself on the drops you're getting at first, but you'll be able to gear up the airship in such a way that you'll be able to do multiple runs later with a better chance of finding better items. So I'm pretty much just, I've been doing six and seven, which pretty close by to each other, uh, even though I have 16, flight distance left it's not enough to reach any of the other locations however I think I found a combo where you can do yeah you can do uh, seven five and one or seven five and two but the experience gains are not quite as high but you know for giggles I'm gonna go ahead and do that now it's estimating 35 or no it's not estimating that's the exact 35 hours and five minutes is the return time it's gonna take me five cerulean barrels now the cerulean barrels I'll show you where you buy them in case you're wondering uh, every airship does require one flight ticket and however many barrels are required for your trip that you're sending it out on. And you get them from the NPCs in your um, free company housing area. I'll run to the one here in Lavender Beds and show you where it's located. But each area does have its own designated little NPC wherever their shops are located. So for us here... That's going to be, if I run from Lavender Northwest, is the closest Aetherite to it, I believe. And I'll pull up the map and show you once it loads. Here we go. So we're headed over to this area. Oh, no, there is an Aetherite there. I need to figure out what that is. Aethernet. Sorry, Aethernet, not Aetherite. Go ahead and pop this sprint. Get over there a little bit quicker for you. The whole system is very fun. Now, I've read a little bit, and apparently once I unlock Sector 8, which... You unlock the new sectors by, as far as I can tell, random chance. Uh, the rank of the ship might be a factor, but it seems to be, you know, you send them out on the highest one you have available, and all of a sudden you'll get the next thing when they, when you come back and the ship returns. But people are saying once you get to sector eight, you're gaining access to having two airships, and uh, somewhere in the teens, you gain access to three. So you are able to send out multiple ships over time. The nice news is the parts you make for your ship are reusable so as you upgrade the ship like we're doing on our wild tree the old parts we can put together to create a second ship anyway you go to the resident caretaker here in your area and you can get the flight credits for 10,000 free company points cerulean tanks are only a hundred as you can see they're very cheap and you need to be at least rank six so while I'm here I'm just gonna pick up another 50 since we have plenty of points and that's that Flight tickets, like I said, you need one to register your airship. We already picked up five at the start, so as we gain access to more ships, we will be able to make them right away and send them out as well. But the, uh, the whole crux of the system is you get yourself, obviously, as I mentioned, tons of items like materia, moco grass, birch branches, things that you can sell or craft with, but a majority of what you receive back from these trips are put into building the airship up some or the housing and ethereal wheel projects. You get items for those as well. So the ethereal wheel is how you're gonna get the tier three company buffs. And the housing projects apparently allow you to add on to your home and have like restaurants or armor shops, things like that within the house. So for us right now, we actually have uh, eight out of 10 red clay that have been brought back to make the restaurant prototype. And once we buy that prototype, we'll have to actually craft all the materials for it, but the, sh the house will be able to have a restaurant on it. And the ethereal wheel, as I mentioned, are for the company buffs. You just gotta get these higher tier items from higher level zones with the airship. So right now, it, like I said, is basically a glorified retainer system, but they've said they're gonna build upon this a lot, so it's worth it if your free company puts in the time to make a ship to rank it up, get some of those areas available. There's rumors that eventually we'll be able to fly on these things and there'll be more of a real-time player exploration, and I'm sure the rank of your airship will factor into that, so get on that now. It's fun, and it's kind of cool to discover new stuff and eventually build bigger and better parts and get your ship up to speed and really get some rare items and make some money. Uh, I'll be honest with you, a lot of the basic stuff you get from the earlier sectors have obviously dropped in price, but that first week red moco grass was selling on Hyperion for like 15K a pop, and you're getting like 20 to 30 per. So you make the money back quickly if you're on the cutting edge. So it's worth 
getting into that now and moving up as quickly as you can if your company hasn't started. Anyway, I hope that guide helps. Uh, the explanation was clear enough and not all over the place. And as always, I want to thank you very much for watching the video. And don't forget to subscribe and throw your comments in that section below and give me that feedback. Uh, for now, I'll be seeing you and I hope you guys take care.